इधर Hello, everyone. Welcome to the January uh, maintainers meeting. Uh, I believe it's top of the hour, so let's get started. Uh, I have uh, the first items on the topics agenda today. Uh, the agenda document is the same as it had previously been for maintainers meetings, um, and it is linked in the calendar invite as well. Um, so the first uh, topic I have, I actually want to put to the end of the meeting, uh, but it's uh, to do with meeting cadence and how often we want to have this meeting. Um, so uh, just something to keep in mind as we're going through today's uh, topics. And when we get to the end, I think uh, that that should be the discussion. That's, I'm proposing that to be the discussion that we end the meeting on today. Um, the next item on the agenda uh, this was just a heads up on how um, the list of MRs, um, obviously being that this is now instead of a weekly meeting, this is now a monthly meeting, and at, or at least it was supposed to be a monthly meeting at this cadence, and then uh, it's been more like a month and a half. Uh, so not all of the MRs that went in in a month and a half went into the list below. Uh, so I was just mentioning here in the topic uh, that for my own items, I basically went through the distribution maintainers channel and reposted any of the uh, merge requests that I called out of my of my own um, there, uh, and that that was kind of my process for that. Uh, and then in terms of this meeting and why I put them there here or here in this meeting at all, uh, it's just kind of re-engage on things we we posted in the. Maintainers channel. My hope is that the maintainers channel is like the first place we post it. Uh, but of course, uh, that's not a way to like document these things were discussed or anything like that, as uh, we eventually will lose those conversations. Uh, so, uh, bring re bringing up here in the meeting is just to make sure that we have a second go round at uh, ones that maybe didn't get seen or didn't. Um, or maybe they didn't get any maintainers feedback on. Uh, so that was my thoughts there. Uh, the next section is the maintainer discussion issues. Um, this is uh, most of the list. There's a few more in the list, but I think we've covered uh, the previous ones. Uh, I was just going to run through these and see if anyone had any comments they wanted to add uh, in the meeting. Um, before we do that, did anyone have any other uh, separate topic other than like a maintainer discussion uh, log issue that you wanted to bring up? If not, we can jump into the discussion issues. Uh, so some of these, I think we've, we've come towards uh, a plan for. So the first one here is marking uh, or make uh, the and this is in Omnibus. This is uh, making uh, the default attributes uh, consistent. Um, basically, we have two ways of, or really three ways, but we're talking about getting it down to, to two. We have our defaults file, which is fine. But then when it comes to configuring um, uh, Omnibus based on uh, other config that the user has provided. So the user provides something, and then we, based on that configuration, we know to set a bunch of other things. 
uh, we kind of have two methods. One is uh, within the uh, service library files. Uh, we typically have a convention of a parse variables uh, method that goes and does that kind of more in a, a Ruby type fashion. Uh, and then we also, you'll see sprinkle pro recipes in recipes uh, themselves, you'll see calls to default to uh, do those overrides. So we have these kind of two different uh, practices uh, and we want to make it consistent. There's already some conversation there in that item about how we want to do that. Uh, it's kind of like whether we went one way or the other. I think, uh, I think we've basically come to the conclusion that we want to do the in recipe style, but we don't want to do it in the further down recipes. We, we want to do it uh, like right away as kind of the first thing uh, after configuration is, is figured out that would start uh, running through the rest of this parse config. Does anyone have anything else, uh, any questions about that or anything they wanted to add uh, to that? I was just had, a, I guess, a comment or a question that it looked like this was created a couple of years ago and then, um, was, you know, recently raised. I was curious, if, is this one we found through the, the tech debt audit we did? So it was, uh, and then it also, with it refreshed, so that's how the conversation restarted up, uh, was through the tech debt uh, review. And then further down in this maintainer list, you'll see uh, a mention of uh, the last one at the bottom, which we I guess we can jump to right now, is public attributes may not be generated when reconfigure fails in the middle of it. Well, so for this item, we were talking about a solution about generating those public items early. Uh, but in order to generate those public items early, we have to have completed all of the parsing of, of uh, attributes con being consistent. So the I think at this point, we've come to the point where the proposed solution uh, for this first item, making the the attributes consistent is now a prerequisite to fixing the, uh, or with in the current plan at least, the fact that uh, the public attributes aren't generated when reconfigure fails or not fully fixing, but improving the situation. So yeah, it was initially a tech deck item and now it's a bit of a blocking other items, item. Gotcha. Thanks for the context on that. Yeah. Uh, so that was all I had on that one. Did anyone else have anything they wanted to discuss on it? Okay, we can jump into the next one. It's, uh, I believe this is also in Omnibus. This is a change GitLab database migrations auto migrate behavior. Uh, and I believe this has already been set. Yes, so we've, I've, I think uh, Ian and I have kind of come to a conclusion on this. So the maintainer discussion label is now off this and we've set it for scheduling. Um, this is just about providing another way uh, through a uh, environment variable now to disable auto migrations. Uh, this is uh, for an improvement in the geo documentation um, where they currently have to uh, disable migrations, run migrate, uh, do the replication, uh, re-enable migrations and run reconfigure again. Sorry, did I say run migrate? I meant run, run reconfigure, disable migrations, run reconfigure, uh, run replication, re-enable migrations and run uh, reconfigure again. Uh, this proposal is just to make it easier for them to uh, run less commands to get that done. With a flag. Um, so I, I've already went and set that for scheduling. Uh, this was basically in triage. Does anyone have any comments on that? Uh, feel, of course, feel free to continue the conversation async in these issues as well. Okay, the next one we have is in charts. Uh, here's a topic uh, about renaming uh, the task runner pod to something else. Uh, 
so we've had uh, several be people being confused with this one. Uh, I, I, I'm certainly open to a new name for it. It's just a matter of picking a name is difficult. I don't think changing the name is much of a problem. And I admit that I'm seeing reports that people are confusing this, but at the same time, I've known two people to tell me they've ever been confused by this name. Um, the, the long of it, we have it referred to as task runner from the beginning, because basically when you need to go do something inside the application, you go run that inside of this little task container, hence task runner. Um, but renaming it to, to some sort of console or thing makes some sense to me, but, and I, 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 because I'm so close to the project, I've never screwed up which runner was which, so. What about uh, toolbox, which is consistent with GKE? Do we like that? How is that consistent with GKE? Oh, because GKE has like this, uh, command that you get on all your nodes called toolbox, which spins up a container that has a bunch of utilities that you can use for troubleshooting. This is how like if you SSH to one of their nodes or one to, in one of the GKE nodes and you need to do some maintenance, like um, let's say you need to run S trace or something on one of the processes, you run a script called toolbox, which pulls down their utility image and allows you to do troubleshooting. Never heard of that. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll add a link to the agenda. You can check it out. Yeah, also the, uh, you just threw out the word utility there, like task utility. Hmm. A bad name as well. Um, yeah, so uh, I think, I think we're kind of like saying we're, we're good with changing the name, we're still looking for a good name. Uh, and probably the change, I imagine, uh, it's not really pressing. This is probably like uh, a, the next major revision type thing is once we can figure out the name um, on building, that's where we kind of target. Right, this. and we'll have to communicate that we're renaming this because there are people that have some amount of automated behaviors around this or their run books. And especially when we start changing primary container names, we're, we're gonna have to let them know that, hey, by the way, you're your PVC name may change, your bindings may change, your RBAC may change because you manually did that. So we need to give them, you know, two or three releases to get the warning. Yep. Yeah, so uh, feel free to continue leaving suggestions for names in that issue. Uh, the next one is replacing ERB um, with something else for configuration template behaviors. Um, I think we're also, uh, this is another case where we're, we're at the point where I think, yes, that's what we want to look into doing. Uh, and it's more of a, we're looking for, um, uh, we've had a couple suggestions and uh, I think we're looking for more suggestions and more investigation on what to replace it with. Uh, does anyone have anything they wanted to bring up on that item? Essentially, this needs, as DJ said, explored. Uh, we need to do a base research spike and see what we can and can't do, and then look into what this will end up breaking out to. This is a straight up proposal. It will, should we go down this route, and in my opinion, obviously we should, it will be broken into one or more epic and a number of issues created from that one because we have to do exploratory. We have to find out which containers actually need to be modified. Obviously, there's some containers that don't need Ruby in them. That's a particular case. There are containers that do need Ruby in them, so we don't necessarily have to change their behavior. Um, but the impact on this is relatively far and wide. So we also have to do that quite carefully. So to be clear, this issue is not the spike. This is just the proposal whether we should do the additional work. Like yeah, what's this the is acceptance a criteria on this one? to collect information on like just explore the idea this is not the spike itself this is not any further work this is you know think about it throw some ideas out there what replacements are define the requirements and then from there we can actually go 
do any amount of spike work. Gotcha. Yeah, and then the, the next one uh, we talked a little bit about, this is uh, so public attributes may not be generated when reconfigure fails in the middle of it. Um, so what happens is when we run reconfigure the public attributes, or sorry, the typically a bunch of the attribute files gets deleted uh, at the beginning of reconfigure and then they get recreated at the very end. That's, so that's with the basic node attributes file. We also have our own public attributes file, which is one that we use in um, several of the commands, um, such as the, the uh, PG bouncer notify for notifying a new Postgres backend and stuff like that, um, that rely on this file being available. Uh, the problem with it, the public attributes file coming at the end is that uh, if reconfigure fails, uh, none of the rest of the commands have any idea of your configuration. Uh, so the proposal here in this issue is to render out that file basically as, as soon as we have all, as, as long as the reconfigure has gotten far enough to parse all of the config. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to have successfully written out or done all of its work, uh, but as long as it's been able to parse both our defaults and what the user provided into our final config, um, the idea is to uh, push out the public attributes at that point so that even if reconfigure then fails, things like your uh, PG bouncer failover might continue to work while you fix reconfigure. Or, you know, so something minor in reconfigure, maybe an exporter mistype is causing it to, to fail reconfigure. It doesn't cause everything to go down. But uh, how will we ensure item potency? Like, what is the command, GitLab control command that is using this value, expects the value to be present on the nodes? What if reconfigure failed before doing that? How, how, how do we ensure the control command? GitLab control command is getting the correct value. Uh, Public attributes has one value, but we have no guarantee that value is what is applied on the node, right? We populated it, but the uh, the uh, chef chef run didn't complete. It didn't get applied to the node. How will we ensure the command is working on actual values, not just something computed? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and something. Uh, Actually, in parallel, how is public attribute file, like why are we considering public attribute file to be different than node attribute file? This this is the case with node attribute file also. Like for things that depend on node attribute file, we expect a successful reconfigure. Uh, the purpose of public attributes was to be a, a file that non-root users could read because uh, there are certain things we were doing as non-root that needed access to node attributes uh, you know, afterwards, but node attributes originally was readable by everybody, but that was a bug, that was a huge bug, and Chef fixed that. And so we added public attributes so we could explicitly make some attributes available to non-root users. Uh, and by design, it runs at the end of the Chef run. Uh, so I think making reconfigure depend on public attributes is the, the, the bug here. We need to not depend on public attributes to reconfigure. Yeah, so the current issue we're running into is, of course, with Petroni. Um, and we've added a new CTL command. Um, and during the reconfigure run, we uh, sometimes call that command, but that command also depends on public attributes that reconfigure would have to have created. So yeah, we have created um, chicken and an egg problem yeah. at this point. So the, the alternate solution would be to solve that chicken and the egg problem. Yeah, I proposed in the in the issue, I had a comment just a few minutes ago proposing that for times in reconfigure where we need a public attribute, it should be passable as a command line argument. 
so that during reconfigure we can pass the actual attribute. We're yeah. With that. In, instead of depending on the file while while inside a reconfigure, we already have that information in the node object or whatever object. We we should be able to get it onto the control command. Makes sense to me. Yeah, that does sound good. And actually, I think that's how the things like the PG bouncer commands work. Uh, that they do like they have a fallback to the public attributes, but for every all those settings, they actually take a, a command line argument. But doing the same thing for the Petroni CTL, and then I like similar to the set command for Helm. You can pass in a file and you can override it with dash dash set the like we can even follow the same syntax. Uh, we can follow the JSON format like PostgreSQL dot use of name equal to something, then that gets applied. Makes sense to me. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, we can continue this conversation in the uh, in the issue, but yeah, I think I think uh, what you put out, Balu, uh, yeah, it's a good point. And uh, thank you, Ian, for your comment in the in the issue. I think that's probably a, a better solution for now, at least for the the issue that uh, in the description of of uh, this one. Uh, the next one is about uh, mirroring the default uh, backend image and probably all of our dependency images um, that are needed by Nginx ingress to registry.getlab.com. Uh, I see uh, John already wrote here that he's he's thrown a proposal in there that as a, a first step we could uh, just document which ones need to be mirrored. Right. This comes out of a uh, team doing implementation for a certain large customer. And that environment there does not have the ability to reach necessarily all of the available public registries. So there are some instances where they've, say, whitelisted our registries for container images, but because we're pulling from somewhere else, um, one of those dependent images ends up being needed. This is where this stems from. Yeah, and then I think uh, last week um, we had it coming from a couple different directions as well, um, as well as as issues um, with the the charts and in production uh, as well, uh, because there was a Cloudflare issue last week and things other than GitLab were down, and all of a sudden dependencies. Our, our dependencies that weren't on registry.getlab.com were uh, not working. That was different. That issue was actually with the charts themselves. Um, and the tooling that was in use was actually trying to pull the chart artifact repository data and couldn't pull the index. It had nothing to do with the registry itself. Yeah, so the initial the initial one it ran into, I believe you're correct, is the, is the chart. I think there I, I could be wrong, uh, John and John John's. correct me, but I, I I think they did also run into the other issue at one point as well with images not pulling at the same time. But either way, they, they are two separate issues, uh, but both in regards to mirroring our dependencies, potentially one for charts, one for images. Though the charts we don't need to mirror for, like currently we package them in the Helm package for other customers. Right. So short summary for everybody else, a Helm, a released Helm chart is a complete artifact, which includes all of its dependencies, aka other Helm charts, which are also artifacts entirely within themselves. So you get a dependency that's basically a tarball of tarballs of YAML files. The issue that, that this is in terms of mirroring this particular image or any other upstream images would be to actually make sure that the container images themselves are available on a single repository source 
so that they wouldn't necessarily have to whitelist a bunch of places. I think this somewhat comes down to one, this particular customer asking for this as a part of their implementation, two, making it easier to actually set where the registries are. Um, we have other issues that need linked um, to do things like global.image.registry that would allow you to leave the name of the container alone, but set wherever the registry is for offline or air gap mirrors, such as this particular customer in their restricted environment. Okay, then we'll go ahead and let that go with further conversation in the issue itself. Yeah, we're coming to the end of our time here. So let's uh, quickly run through the remaining uh, merge quest items if there's any people wanted to talk about. Uh, Jason, you're up first for Helm charts for items that were merged. These are, are not entirely incomplete, um, but the big changes around here are dealing with CI in regards to the dependency proxy and the changes that we made there. Um, I have a number of items here that are basically follow-up listing from a lot of changes in December. There have been a couple things that happened very recently. Uh, I don't have really anything else to call out other than to watch out for major version upgrades and the changes coming in regards to GitLab pages. Balo has been instrumental in getting the primary functionality to configure GitLab pages, deploy GitLab pages, and now we're looking into the extended attributes of access control and a lot. Yeah, from my side, uh, what I wanted to call out in charts, uh, one is that I, we, we've switched to Helm 3 in the review apps. Um, so be aware if you need to access the CI clusters um, and check out the releases or do any fixes there. Uh, the EPS or the GKE cluster that you need to now be using the Helm 3 uh, binaries and not, no longer use Helm 2 or uh, the Tiller. So Tiller is still sitting in the clusters, but it should have no releases in it currently. Uh, the other one is uh, around GitLab shell. Um, so in our master branch in uh, the charts, uh, we are now pointing at the GitLab shell main branch. So GitLab shell has made the move from uh, master to main. Uh, and uh, that's just something to be aware of. And uh, shell should be using that through GitLab. Uh, but other, other projects will probably be making this switch as well. That's it for me on charts for things I wanted to call out. Uh, on the omnibus, I um, wanted to call out that uh, the we've been continuing to move uh, some of the items out of the GitLab cookbook into their own cookbooks. Uh, so in this last release, we did uh, the PG bouncer exporter recipes have been moved. Uh, so just be aware of uh, uh, with this release issues that might arise from that. Uh, and then also we had, we did do a major Petroni upgrade um, from my testing. It was fully backwards compatible with the previous one and could be used in a mixed environment. Uh, but wanted to call that out uh, that we went from like a 164 to a 201. Uh, and then also a uh, change that we haven't, uh, that we've made in the builder Docker files, but haven't ruled, we haven't started using it in uh, the CI yet, um, is that we've changed how the Docker files are rendered in Omnibus Builder. They're now templated with snippets to a degree. And so we can use the same snippets, for example, for installing uh, Golang in all of the different uh, Omnibus Builders Docker uh, container groups. Uh, so that's a good one to check out or just keep in mind if you need to make a change there that uh, that's, uh, we've kind of completely redone how that works. Uh, so it'll take a little bit of extra time to uh, if you're making a change there to uh, become familiar with that. That's it for me. Uh, Balu, over to you. Thanks, AJ. So I have two to call out. One, uh, we are upgrading Postgres to Telpo index automatically on package upgrades on single node instances. So 
we will not be doing this for geo ha or any of those just for single node instances so uh, this is going in in 138 so watch out for any issues that might happen uh, next is uh, we have extracted gitlab pages to its own cookbook uh, following the extracting services to their own cookbook work so uh, pages now lives on its own cookbook with all the relevant files extracted uh, in my testing nothing broke and uh, everything seems to work on fine on upgrades too but just be aware of this went in uh, those are the only two ones for me was to get lab operators yeah i think we're at the end of our uh half hour today so uh we'll um uh end here and uh, if anyone has any questions about the ones listed in the GitLab operator, please post in the maintainers meeting channel. Uh, and then we didn't get a chance to talk about the meeting cadence. So I will, uh, as soon as I can, I will kind of start up a conversation in the distribution uh, maintainers channel and we can uh, discuss the cadence there and we'll get the next one scheduled. Thank you everyone. Uh, see you in the next meeting.